Because you're a man of character. And that character comes from where? It comes from persevering. Because they saw you are persevering in the things you told them. When you arrived, you told them, I'm a child of God. And you persevered. Yes, Lord. We came this morning to bow before you. Because we recognize in you our maker. We recognize in you our Lord and our Savior. Our Redeemer. Our Provider and our Protector. Lord, here we are ready to receive from you. To listen from you, O oh God. Let our heart be prepared, ready. And let your word have an impact in our lives change and transform us O oh Lord so that we may have your image so that you may become like you for I use as a simple instrument let us disappear so that you alone may fully appear and receive all the praise and all the glory thank you for this morning we bind every power of darkness every contrary spirit we bind them and we command them to leave this place in jesus mighty name reign O lord from the beginning until the end in jesus mighty name we pray and we say amen can we give jesus a round of applause Thank you for coming. You may have a seat. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. This morning, I want us to be encouraged, to be strengthened, and to be boosted. Because we really need it. Come with me in the book of Hebrews. We're going to read three scriptures. The first one is in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. <clears throat> Sorry. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, and the second one will be in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13, Matthew 24, verse 13, and the last one will be in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 6. Let's start with uh, Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. It is written as follows. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And now, let us run with perseverance the race marked, for, marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Yeshua, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Matthew 24, verse 13. It is written as follows. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Another version they say, the one who will persevere to the very end will be saved. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 6. Verse 6. Now, the Bible says, maybe let's start with verse 5 so that we may understand. The Bible says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, verse 13, the Lord Jesus is speaking to us and is saying that there is salvation that is prepared for us at the end. But he said, those who are going to enjoy salvation are only those who are going to 
persevere until the end. Because it is possible to start but not to finish the race. The Bible says there is a race that has been opened for us the day we gave our life to Jesus Christ. The day we decide to make him our Lord and our, our Lord and Savior, that day we entered in the race. But the issue is not only to enter the race. The issue is to finish the race. And the Bible says that those who are going to be crowned, those who are going to be blessed, are only those who are going to persevere until the end. Those are going to remain until the end. Those are going to remain constant until the end. Those are going to remain in the position of children of God until the end. This is the reason why this morning I want to share with you about perseverance. Can somebody say perseverance? perseverance. Again, perseverance. perseverance. Beloved, we need perseverance. You need to understand in anything that you are doing, you need to persevere. Unless it's a good thing. Perseverance is one of the key of success. If you want to succeed in whatever thing that you are doing, you better be perseverant. You better persevere. Because if you don't persevere, you might not get. Because everything does not come at the, same, at the first push. There are things which comes at the third push. There are things which comes at the tenth push. So you better continue to persevere. You better continue to push for you to receive something. Hallelujah. I know I've spoken about perseverance to, uh, before, but this morning I want to speak about it again because many of us uh, have gotten, have got discouraged. Many of us, we are no longer pushing the way we used to push before. We need to be encouraged in this race to push because if we do not persevere, we, may, we might lose all the promises that God has given us. And there are people today who are incriminating God. They are talking, bad mouthing about God and the promise of God just because they're not coming to pass. But the reason why they're not coming to pass is because you are no longer perseverant. You do no longer persevere the way you used to. You have gone weary. You have gone down. You have changed. You are no longer the way you have been before. Hallelujah. So it is important for us to cultivate perseverance. It is important for us to know what kills perseverance so that you may remove those kind of things that kills perseverance. Hallelujah. Jesus, the son of the living God, he persevered. The Bible says he knew what he came to do, yet he knew that it was painful, yet he persevered. He continued despite the pain, despite difficulties. And Apostle Paul is one of, the men, one of the men of God in the Bible who also persevere. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, he said that uh, I have fight the good fight of faith. He said I fought that fight, the good fight of faith, and I have finished the fight. Now listen to what he's saying. He said I've kept faith. In other words, I've persevered in the things that I know. This morning, I'm going to teach you what you need to persevere into. Because there are things which you don't need to persevere into. The moment they come in your life, do not persevere into. You must go out of those things. But there are certain other things. You better persevere in them because they will bring salvation to your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Paul said he, he fought the good fight of faith. He fought. And at the end, he said, I kept my faith. I don't know when we'll stand before the Lord that day. And when he will ask you, where is your faith? What you will say? Will you say that I've kept faith? I've been persevering all along and I kept faith. Or when you'll arrive before the Lord, he said, Lord, I couldn't persevere. I've lost my faith. Now I have nothing. Hallelujah. We need perseverance. Now, what is perseverance? Perseverance is the continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failures, and opposition. I want you to take note of these three things. Difficulties, failure, and opposition. Because those three things are inherent or are attached 
to the human nature. Hallelujah. Those three things are attached to the human nature and we learn that those three things are enemies of perseverance. So to persevere is to persist in something. When I say that I'm persevering, it means I persist to do something. I'm persistent. I am persistent. I persist to do that thing despite difficulties, failure, and opposition. You need to understand that those three things will always be there. But for us to say that you are a man who's persevering, you need to continue. Continue to persist. Continue to do effort. Continuous effort. Permanent effort without giving up. Pushing without giving up. Today I want you to push. I know it's difficult. I know outside that time are very difficult. Things are tough. They are no longer like they've been before. South Africa is no longer like it's been before. I remember when I arrived in this country, bread, the bread, the loaf of bread, it was five rand. Five rand, the loaf of bread. That we are paying today, 16, sometimes 20 rand. That loaf of bread. I was paying it at five rand. Beloved, time is tough. I know the money I used to give to my wife to go and, uh, and uh, do the grocery for the entire house. We, I can't give the same money today because it is tough. I know it's tough. So if it is tough, you need to be tougher. If it is tough outside there, you need to be tougher. Because if you are not tougher than the toughness of outside, you'll be crushed. Amen. You'll end up in psychiatric institution. You'll end up in hospital. You have a breakdown because things are tough. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus never said that things are going to be easy. He never said that. Jesus never said that if you become a Christian, everything is going to be rose. No. He never said that. Things will be tough. That's why you must be tougher than things. That's why you need to persevere. You need to resist. Christian of today, we have given up on so many things. We are no longer persistent. I mean, we are persistent, but in things which are not important. We are persistent, but we are not persistent on things that should produce benefit. We are persistent in things. We are persistent in our work. We are persistent in lying. We are persistent in having many girlfriends, boyfriends. We are persistent in dirty things, but we are not persistent in the things of God. You see, since you started sinning, since you become conscious of your life, up until today you are persistent in sinning. I pray for you to become also persistent in living life of holiness. Amen. We are persistent in sinning. You are persistent in asking for forgiveness. You don't spend one day without coming and saying, Lord, forgive me, I've done it again. Because you are persistent in those things. Hallelujah. Let the Lord have mercy. Persistence is important in our lives. Why? Because persistence is one of the, six, the seven things that are needed to add to our faith. You know, seven things need to be added to our faith. We did read it in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 6. And the Bible says that among the things you need to add to your faith, listen, faith needs to be sustained. And there are seven things that sustain faith. 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says, look, those are the seven things that sustain somebody's faith. If you want your faith to persist, to remain, you need those seven things. And one of them, one of them, it is persistence. One of them, it is to, to be persevere, to, to persevere. So perseverance, persistence is one of the seven things that your faith need. Is one of the feeder or the strengthener of our faith. So if we do not have perseverance, we will lose our faith. Our faith will grow weary. That's why the Bible says, to your, and, and faith need to be added to your self-control. If you read the scripture, everything which is said before produce what comes after. So the Bible says, and to knowledge, 
add self-control. So self-control is produced by knowledge. When I know, I know to control myself. Because I know if I do, I may hurt. Now, the Bible says, and to self-control, perseverance. So what brings perseverance is self-control. When you have self-control, you'll be able to contain yourself no matter how difficult it is, and that is perseverance. You'll be able to continue to walk no matter how painful, no matter how difficult, no matter how the opposition is, because you have self-control, you'll control it. Because if you do not have self-control, you're going to lose it. God knows how many times, because of lack of self-control, we've put ourselves in troubles. God knows how many babies we have outside there because we did not have self-control. God knows how many hearts we have broken outside there because we did not have self-control. I am praying for you to have self-control. Self-control is to put yourself together. You must be able to put yourself together. You see, your body is always having the tendency to go left and right. When you have self-control, you put it together. Hey, come together. Our body, the body that you are having there, let me just remind somebody that your body is not you. Your body is only the envelope that is carrying you. And you communicate to your body through your soul which is the middle part between your body and your spirit. You are actually spirit. The Bible says in reality in man it is the spirit, the breath of the almighty God. So you, the true you is not your body. The true you is the spirit which is in you. This is the reason why the day you will die will not gonna allow you to be in this church anymore. The day you die, your body will not gonna come here anymore. We will go and throw it somewhere in the cemetery, alone, in a very small place like this. No matter how rich you have been, no matter your, the cars you had, no matter the cloth you had, no matter the fame you had, when you die, we may put a big tombstone, but the, the grave, I mean the pit will still be small, just to fit you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you are not, it is not you. We are no longer dealing with you. You are gone already. It's only your body. So you better put yourself together. You better control that body. Because the Bible says in the book of Corinthians that the body have the desires which is against the spirits. Galatians chapter 5. The body has the desires which are against the spirits. The body wants to sleep and you let it also sleep. You are a church, but you are letting your body sleep. No, tell your body, hey, we are here at church. I'm here to listen to the word of God. You must listen to me. When the body wants things, he will oblige you to go to them. When the body is in the desire of alcohol, he will take you to drink that alcohol. And still you are following that body. But now is the time for your spirit to eat. Your body doesn't want. Because the body has nothing to do with this word. In the book of Corinthians, the Bible said that the blood and body will never inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, that's why your, your body is, is, is tormenting you. That's why it's fighting you. Imagine if we were watching a movie. I'm telling you, none of us will sleep. Imagine if we were, we were watching a Champions League. Who will be there? Our eyes big open because the Champions League. But now that is the word of God. Look at how you are fight. You are fought by your own body. Put yourself together. Tell your neighbor, put yourself together. Put yourself together. Tell him, hey, be together because this is the time to listen to the word of God. And that body, the Bible says, will never inherit the kingdom of God. My brother, no matter how beautiful you are, no matter how handsome you are, one day you will go on the floor, you'll go to dust. A couple of weeks ago, I went for a postmortem. I think I told you. I went for the postmortem. Beloved, this body is nothing. I went to do a postmortem of somebody. You know, <laughs> I look at the, the body of people without life there, alone, without their money, without their cars, without their. I saw other people. See, this one was rich, but he's there. We brought, the way they are carrying him, you know. The way they open, you know, when they open, they, they remove everything inside, they remove the brain. You, you know, you are looking and saying, wow, is this a human being or what? And the person cannot talk. He cannot do nothing. And his money from the bank 
cannot come to say, oh, don't stop doing that. Why? Because the true person has departed from the temple. The true you is your spirit. Take care of that body. But be careful. Let that body not direct you. Let that body not direct you. Make sure that you are the one directing that body. Hallelujah. That's why put yourself together. Perseverance is one of the seven things which are needed for faith. Why perseverance is important? Perseverance is important because it is the only one thing that will help us to reach the end and to receive the crown. Jesus said in the book of Matthew 24 verse 13, he who will persevere to the end will do what? Will be saved, will receive the crown. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that uh, if a, a righteous man stop being righteous and does wrong, when we find him at the end, he shall not be considered righteous at the end if he stop doing good. Most of you are thinking that God is a God who lives in the past. Now God will remember the good things I did. He's good. But the day will come, he must find you doing the good. If the day God comes, find you doing something else. You cannot tell him, no, God, please remember, I used to do good things, but now you know, you know life, you know, no, the Bible, that, you say, that's why I, I send you the preaching of perseverance. For you to persevere until the end. I send you the message so that you may do what? You may persevere until the end. I am not just saying persevere now. No, persevere until the end. Perseverance must give you. Perseverance is the ability for you to continue to remain a child of God until the end. The third importance of perseverance. Perseverance will help you to inherit promises. If you don't persevere, you're not going to inherit promise. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. 1036. The Bible says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God by persevering, you will receive what he has promised. God will not going to give you, will not going to accomplish his promises in your life if you do not persevere. You need to persevere. Persevere in what? Persevere in doing the will of God. Persevere in remaining the child of God. Remain the child of God. Then the promise of God will, will come to pass in your life. So perseverance will help us to inherit the promise of God. Many of us, we are not inheriting. We are not enjoying the promise of God. Why? Because we do not persevere. I mean, we persevere, but in other things, except in what we're supposed to persevere into. Hallelujah. Perseverance is important because perseverance produces character. Perseverance produces character. Brothers and sisters, you know, God has taught me things about character. You know, I, I just went in the, in the feet of God and said, God, help me. I'm a, norm, I'm a, man, a man without character. We don't have character. You know, a man of character, you can anticipate him. You can anticipate what he will do in this kind of situation. Because you know how he thinks. You know his character. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 4. Romans 5, 4. Romans chapter 5, verse 4. We need to become... Men and women of character. Romans chapter 5 verse 4. Maybe let's start by verse 3. Romans chapter 5 verse 3. Not only so, but we also, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And verse 4, perseverance produces character. Perseverance could produce Character. If you do not persevere, you will not going to be a man of character. 
We cannot anticipate you. We can change you at any time. You know, there are people that don't have character. They are not, you know, a man who does not have character is a man without identity. <laughs> Wait until I speak to you about character. A man without character is a man without identity. It's a man that I can do whatever I want. I can always say, ah, you know him. Ah, let's just, I'll convince him. He's a man who can be convinced in anything. I can convince him to come to church today, and immediately after church, I can convince him to go to coconut, and immediately after coconut, I can convince him to go to retreat because he has no character. He has no character. And they're Christian like that without character. Let go, Jim. Go, Jim. No, let go, Jim anymore. Let not take, let take uh, uh, those things, slimming tablet. You go to slimming tablet. No, 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 not let No, have a character. So, no, people say, no, this one. You see, beloved, I learned something about a man of character. You see, if somebody comes to you and suggests you evil, come to you and suggest you evil, it means that your character has failed already. Because if your character was there, a person cannot even try to come and suggest you things because he knows that this guy, don't even try, he's not going to work. You see why people are coming and suggest you nonsense? Because you have no character. You never show them that you're a man of integrity. You never show them that you are, you are a man that does not go left and right. You see, when you, people know, when they will come to you, when friends at work will say, no, let's try to suggest him to have a nyati. Tell no, don't try with him. This guy, don't even try. Don't bother. It's not going to work. Him, he will not going to work because you're a man of character. And that character comes from where? It comes from perseverance. Because they saw you are persevering in the things you told them. When you arrive, you told them, I'm a child of God. And you persevere in being the child of God. Therefore, they will see your character. But if you, you came and told them, I'm a child of God. And the two months up down the line after the company, they saw you on alcohol. And the other month, they saw you when you went to a party, you are there dancing and you are, you know, compromising yourself. You have no character. Now they will be able to suggest you evil. Why? Because you don't have character. Because you did not persevere in things you say that you are. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. You did not persevere in the identity you give them. I pray for you for you to persevere in the identity you gave them. You told them from the beginning that you're a child of God. Remain the child of God. Persevere in being the child of God. You told them in the beginning that uh, you are not going to compromise yourself. You are not going to have nyati. Remain like that. Amen. I know sometimes it's not always easy. That's why we spoke about you must persevere in failure opposition and difficulties yeah. hallelujah praise the living jesus the fifth thing that perseverance does perseverance will help you to be called a blessed one we will know that you are a blessed one when you remain in what you said you, are, you persevere you persist in what you say james chapter 5 verse 11 James 5, 11, the Bible says, As you know, we count as blessed those who have. We count as blessed those who have. Persevere. So if you do not have perseverance, we can't count you among the blessed one. You go up, you go down, you go up, you are not a blessed one. A blessed man, the Bible says, we count them. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of job perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Job was a, a man of persistent. Persistence. He was persistent. Remember what happened to him? He lost all the wealth that he had on one day. Yet, he was persistent. He persevered being the job that we knew. He lost his children. He persevered. He lost even his health. He became sick 
abandoned by the wife. The wife even came one day and said, curse God and die. Oh, we are looking for the people who can persist that even the pain is too much. People who can remain persistent even in pain, in difficulties and in challenges. What is happening to Christians when pain comes? Most of us are given up. When we stay two days without eating, we give up. When we stay two days without salary, we give up. God knows how, in how many domains of your life you have given up. In how many areas of your life you have given up. Why? Because of challenges. Because of opposition. Because of difficulties. Hallelujah. So we'll count you as a blessed man if you persist and persevere. Hallelujah. Now, here are the challenges that comes to perseverance. Perseverance will always be challenged. How will we know that you are a man who persevere if there are no challenges? How will you know that you persevere? Actually, you cannot speak about perseverance where there is no challenge. You will, you will persevere until there is challenge. <laughs> you will be a man of character until there is challenge. Actually, character can only be seen when there are challenge. We will never know that you are a man of integrity if your integrity is not challenged. Don't just tell us I'm, an, I'm a man of integrity. We will know that you're a man of integrity when your integrity is challenged. We'll know that you're a man of character you're a woman of character when your character is challenged. We will know that you are a man, a woman of, of character when a man who has a ten, times more, 10 times more money than your husband will come and propose you. We will see that you're a woman of integrity, a woman of character. A man will throw money before you. Sister, married woman, do not accept a gift from a man who is not your man. And especially without informing your husband at home. The moment you accept a gift from a man who is not your husband. And two, you keep it from your husband. You are already in unfaithfulness. Now look how many things. The previous and sometimes even when the husband, the husband asks you, oh, this dress is nice. Who bought it to you? Oh, it is a friend. You know, sin always brings another sin. Now, from hiding, you bring lies. You're even wearing that cloth in your house with your husband. You don't even feel anything. There's a problem with you. You need deliverance. You are a woman without character. Men... It's the same thing. Do not receive a gift from a woman who is not your wife without informing your wife. If you get that gift, then if you accept it, then be bold enough to come to your wife. Say, honey, this gift was given to me by this other woman. Because you don't know what gift can do. The Bible says that gift is blinding the eyes. Gift is corrupting judgment. There are people who have taken away just because of gifts. Just because of food. Just because of gifts. If you do not pay attention, you'll be taken away. Just pass those kind of gifts. You see? Unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness is not only when you go and sleep with somebody else. Unfaithfulness is when you do things with other women or other people who are not your spouse that you are supposed to do only with your spouse. It is unfaithfulness. Sorry. We need to tell the truth, brothers. The Lord Jesus is about to come. His church must be spotless. Spotless. Hallelujah. There are many things we have in our house that we got somewhere. And you know, sometimes I don't understand. You know very well the intention of this man. He has spoken to you before. He has told you and you have told that person that I am a married man, woman. Or I am a married man. But he's giving you gift and you are accepting it. Do you not understand that the gift is giving to you is to soften your heart. Is to challenge your character. Is to challenge your persistence. Is to challenge your perseverance. 
show that person, I persevere. Oh, my Lord, help us. I persevere in the promise I did to that woman. In the promise I give to that man, I want to persevere. Therefore, no. Even at the house, we did not eat. I left my kids hungry. You see, brothers and sisters, many people have done things they didn't want to do just because they've been softened by the gift. A young lady will say, oh, this guy has been paying my school fees since I was at the varsity. Now, you know, he has asked me that. I can't refuse. I don't love him, but I can't refuse. And that very same time that you give, this is the time now things happen. Now you are bind and you cannot free yourself. Be persistent. Persevere in the way they knew you. Persevere being a child of God. No matter what. Now, these are the things that challenge perseverance. The first thing that challenge perseverance is difficulties. Problems. Challenge. Those are the things that challenge our perseverance. But unfortunately, those are actually the things that reveal our perseverance. We will never know or you will never know that you are a man of persistence or perseverance until you will be challenged. You will know that you are a man and a woman of character only when challenge will come and you stand still. You know there are people, you look at them, they are so equal to themselves even when there is a rain, even when it is hot, even when it is cold, the gentleman remain himself. Many of us, we are changing. We are like chameleon. We change with the weather. We change with the issue. We change with the circumstances. Remain a child of God. Difficulties will never kill you. Because the Bible says, May, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The Lord will deliver you if you are persistent. If you are shaky. If you are moving. The Lord is not going to do anything because of are finding solution. Tell him, Lord, I will remain the child of God. No matter what. Even when it's difficult, my brother, it, I'm telling you it's going to be tougher. You better be tougher than the toughness of your problem. You better, be, you better be tougher than whatever is tormenting you. You see, the good thing is you are the winner of this battle. God says you are the winner. But still you are giving up. Why are you giving up? Because God says you are the winner. Hallelujah. You are the winner, but you are giving up. Why? Difficulties will come, my brother. Let me tell you something. We always think that the neighbor is better than us until we put the shoes of the neighbor. <laughs> we always think that uh, there all oh, is rose. Is, but you don't know what he does to keep it together. You don't know what they are doing to keep their marriage together. You don't know how persistent, how tough they are to make their marriage work. You think that they don't have problems. You think that everything is okay with them. Listen, at the level of any riches, there are difficulties. At any level, there are difficulties. You see, now, you get your salary, they give you directly, you take it, you put it in the pocket. You have no problem. You have other problem. Maybe that salary is small. Okay. That is your problem. That, 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 that is your difficulty. You must deal with it. But now, as when they will be paying you at the bank, you're going to have another challenge. It's going to be too much. But now, taxes will get involved. You do not pay tax. Sars will come after you. That is another problem. So at any level, there are problems. You see now, you can walk around. You can come to church even by feet. There's no problem. Tomorrow, when God will make you a millionaire, you can't come by feet anymore. You know why? You are afraid to be killed. You are afraid of people to come after you. Now, for you to come here, we need to prepare. You need to have a lot of people. You, you know, at any level of life, there are difficulties. There's nobody who can say that I'm free from difficulty. No. At every level, there are difficulties. Deal with it. Deal with it. 
Stop complaining. Stop. Because there is no level of your life where there won't be difficulties. Amen. At any level of your life, you will encounter difficulties. So the, the sooner you get used to difficulty, the better it will be for you. Anyway, the Bible says, he who lives in you is greater than he who lives in the world. He who lives in you is greater than the difficulties. And the second thing, brothers and sisters, that challenge our character, that challenge our persistence, that challenge our perseverance is called failure. Failure. My brother, lacking it or not, you will taste failure. No matter how holy you can be. Because God wants to remind you that you're a human being. You'll fail. Because you don't know everything. It is attached to our nature. There's nobody who can say that you never fail. If we are failing, in many ways, we are failing in our life. Failure will come in our life. But failure must not make you change who you are. Must not make you change your character. You must continue to remain the child of God no matter failure. Now listen to this. Failure is not a problem. But remaining in failure, that is a problem. Many of you, you fail and you're still at the place where you fall. Why? Because you don't understand that failing is not a problem. But you need to stand and walk and say, okay, I fell here. Now all I need to find out why did I fail? Which lesson can I learn from this failure so that I can walk again? The problem is many of us were failing, but are not retrieving any lesson out of that failure. Listen to this. Every time you fail, there is a lesson God is giving you. You better get that lesson and go out of that failure and walk. Hallelujah. Every time you fail, you must ask God, what are you teaching me in this failure? There's a brother who fell, who came to me and said, oh, pastor, now I know how I fell. I know where I fell. I'm going to correct it. And I'm telling you, he corrected it and he passed. Because he knew where he fell. He, he understood what was the problem. Do not remain in that failure with guiltiness. You see, the devil will always come to you when you fail and tell you, you are nothing, you know nothing, you are good of nothing, you will never make it. Tell him, I fell today. It doesn't mean that I'll fail again tomorrow. Today I went down, I learned my lesson. I must now stand and walk. Persevere, don't give up. You know, a uh, couple of days ago, I saw we have a group of pastors of Rustenburg. There is something amazing that they put in, in, the, in that group. They put a video of, uh, of people who were in a race. They were running. And there was a gentleman who was the first. You know, he was like, a, I don't know, 100 meter from the, the end point. The guy was so, he was alone, you know. All the other people were beyond him. He was so tired that he couldn't walk anymore. He was failing and fainting. He went on the floor. And there was somebody who was behind him who passed him. And there was a second one who came. Who was his twin brother. Who was also in the other race. You know what this twin brother did amazed me. He just take his, the hand of his brother. Put on his neck. And he started running with that brother. He ran with that brother. And when they reached the line. He went behind and Pushed his brother to make it. Beloved, the Holy Spirit does that for you. Amen. If we allow him, he will keep you. He, that's why they call him, uh, they, 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 they call him the comforter. They call him, uh, I mean, uh, the, oh my goodness. The Spirit of God is there to be close to you. He, he, his role is to hold you, to push you if you allow him to do that. Listen, a person who is in the floor. Who has fallen on the floor. When you come to help him. And the person folds his hand. What does it mean? He doesn't need your help. When, when you are coming and you are stretching your hand on a person who is in the pit. And the person folds his hand. It just means that that man does not need your help. There are many here. When the Lord, the Holy Spirit is coming to help us to go. You are folding your hands. You want to remain in that situation. 
Beloved, it is time for you to understand failing is not a problem. But the problem is remaining in that failure. Get out of that situation. Get out of that guiltiness. Stand up. The Holy Spirit will help you. He will put your hand and walk with you. That's why they call him Paracletos. Para. Close to you to talk for you. Close to you to help you. He's a Paracletos. He's close to you but can help you. He can push you. But for him to help you, you need to allow him to help you. You will fail, my brother. Lacking, no matter how you know, you can do. It will happen one day you'll fail. Hallelujah. Amen. You do something, it doesn't work. But it's not because you did that thing and it didn't work that you should stop doing that. Do you know the gentleman of Kentucky that you call KFC? An American man. His recipe for the chicken, he failed 1,000 times. Have you ever read that story? 1,000 times. He tried for the first time. It didn't work. He tried for the second time. He said, oh, no. Dirtiness. He waited until the 1,001 time. That is the time then he succeeded. My brother, continue. Do not give up. Please tell your neighbor, do not give up. Touch him to wake him up also. Neighbor, do not give up. You don't know maybe the next time is the time that's going to work. Somebody told me, no, I tried all the men. No, men are just liars. No, I tell you, no, 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 no. Men are not just liars. There is a man for you who's not going to be a liar. Maybe other men, they are liars because they were not yours. But there will be one who's going to be yours who's not going to be a liar. Hallelujah. Don't put us all in, all, all in the same bag. We are not in the same bag. I'm aside. But if I'm not for you, I will be a liar to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, don't give up. Amen. Do not give up. Persevere. Are you with me? Persevere. Next year it didn't work. It doesn't mean that... Then, then, I mean, last year it didn't work. It doesn't mean that next year is not going to work. If you tried yesterday, it didn't work. Remember, yesterday has another circumstances. Not a temperature, not a wind. Not, oh, there were a lot of things different. Today is another day. Things are different. If it didn't work yesterday, the circumstances of today are different. It can work today. So I can do something today. Even you, you have changed. So it means that if it didn't work yesterday, it can work today. Go again. Try again. Push again. That's what I told you at the beginning. We must push. How you better push, push, push back. If difficulties push, push back. If failure push, push back. Remember, those who are with you are more than those who are with your enemies. Hallelujah. The third thing that challenges our perseverance is called opposition. Opposition of people. People will always oppose you. People will always tell you things. I don't trust you. You're not going to make it. You are too small. People will tell you things. Those are the Sambalas and the Tobias of our life. And the Arabs of our life. You will always have the Sambala in your life. You will always have the Tobia and the Arab. They will come to you to oppose you. They will always discourage you. You know there are people who are discouraging you in a very nice manner. He will tell you, hey, I tried. Don't, don't go, I tried. I failed. Listen, we are not the same. We don't have the same height. We don't have the same skin color. We don't have the same birth, date of birth. We don't have the same genes. We don't have the same grace. If you fail, it doesn't mean that I will fail. Stop with your position. Amen. There are many people who stop just because somebody who fell told him that I fell. I'm telling my children when they go to school, do not be Friend to the failures. Love them, but don't be their friend, their failures. Be friend with those who are succeeding. I was told the same thing. I must have friends who are intelligent. That's why I'm choosing my friend. I'm looking for successful friends so that they may help me to succeed. They may give me the secret to succeed. I will help those who are falling, but I'm not going to be their friend. I want to be the friend of those who are succeeding. If you are a friend of those who have, who have broken their marriage, the Lord will tell you, ah, marriage. 
difficult. Me, I have friends, not those who are divorcing. I don't, I'm not friends with a divorcee. I don't want to be friends with them. They, want, they will teach me how to divorce. I want to be friends with those who remain in their marriage of 30 years. Yes, I want to be the friend of these people. They will teach me that no matter is painful, but do this and do that. I did it and I persevere. Amen. You see, I remember when I was sitting, still at the varsity, there are people who are repeating the year. Every time the, the, the lecturer will enter, they look at that, ah, this guy is bad. I told him, hey, Papa, no. He was bad last year. We don't know this year. No, this guy, even if you study, you're not going to make it. But yet, there are people who are in the other year. They pass this guy. They make it in this guy. Why you are saying you're not going to make it? What happened to those who went to the other class? You are telling me that because you have fallen. You fell. Don't be friend with failures. Love them, pray for them, encourage them, but not in your circle. Because they will teach you things. Be friend with winners. Be friend with those who have made it. Brothers, that is it. I'm not saying that you should hate them. I'm saying you should encourage them. Pray for them, lift them up. But choose your friend. Hallelujah. Opposition will be there. And opposition can also come from your own body. Your own body is your first opposant. Are you aware of that? Your first body is the first person who is opposing you. The one proof. Look, you are at church, you are sleeping. <laughs> he is opposing you. Just let church finish. Wait, just church finish. You know, sometimes I'm asking myself, when on a Friday I'm so tired that I want my bed. But the, the very same way I'm tired, I have people who are very same, they're having the very same tiredness, but they are planning to spend the whole night at coconut. Now I ask, where do you get that energy? Then I understand the body is a liar. He will always oppose you, but if you just tell the body that let's do something for your interest, the body will come strong. Imagine if you're about to sleep and the body they tell you that, oh, come. There is something, a law come for money. You will stand. No matter, you get strength. You, the body goes. Inside you are tired, but your body will take you. Your body is your opposant. You better keep your body under control. Tell your neighbor, keep your body under control. You better keep him under control. Because if you don't keep your body under control, it will oppose you. You want to meditate the word of God, it will oppose you. No, I'm tired. I want to sleep. You want to pray, say, no, 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 knees are painful. Remember, you have rheumatism. You have this and that. You want to fast, you know you have problems. But for other things, you know, sometimes people who are always saying that I cannot fast because I have, um, I have ulcer and whatever. He can stay without eating until the afternoon with the very same ulcer. Because it was not fasting. Because it was not fasting, the body is not claiming. The day is fasting, the body starts claiming, no, I have ulcer. So you better command your body. Apostle Paul saying that I am making sure that I keep my body under control. Your body is a dangerous tool that you are having. And your body is a best friend of the devil if you don't know. They are talking together. Your body, they are talking with the, body, with the devil. That's why your body brings all kind of forbidden desires to you and it will influence your soul now when those when, when you, you see your body have your five senses it will take all those things bring them to your soul influence your soul now you start feeling it even your spirit speaks nothing will happen because your, your soul is already influenced hallelujah and there are also opposition from demons Demons are also opposing our life. That's why we must pray. Break them so that they may oppose, op oppose you. Because sometimes you have opposition from demons. You are doing things, they are failing, not because you don't know. Not because of the circumstances, but because of evil spirits. So you must pray them down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, how can you boost your your, your perseverance? Or what boosts perseverance? Or what strengthens perseverance? You know, it's so contra You know, I was asking God, God, what are you talking about? This, you know, <laughs> perseverance comes from suffering and test. I was like, ah. Perseverance comes from 
suffering and test. The Bible says, those who have suffered in their body, they are finished with sin. So when you are going through suffering, when you are going through test of your life, it depends how you perceive, how you perceive pain and suffering. So from today, do not per perceive pains and suffering or difficulties as a mean to put you down, but see them as a mean to strengthen you. Amen. Let me give you an example. I remember when I was very young, in, in the area where I was living, there was a lot of malaria. Now, I was always having a problem with my mother because every time I would feel like a bit of fever, he will always take me to the clinic. And when you arrive at the clinic, they must always do for me something. Those who know that, they call it good best. You know, they will always prick me in my finger, take some blood, and check for malaria. You know, I was, I was, that is the only one day I was thinking that my mother was not my mother. Because I was like, why is he allowing this pain to me? But in reality, he was not, she was not allowing pain. She was taking death away from me. Because malaria could have killed me. So when they will do that and find that I have malaria, I'll be given medication. And the second thing, there was a medication is still today called quinine. I don't know if you know quinine. Any, anybody ever drink quinine here? It's so bitter. So bitter. So bitter, I'm telling you. So he was, she was always giving me quinine. It was so bitter that you can't, the five days will take it, you can't eat anything else. It's so bitter. But because of that, I'm today alive. I'm, stay to, I'm today in good health because of the pain that I went through. So it was, she has a perception of the pain. She saw that pain, not a pain, but a way to give me a good health. So when pain is coming in your life, difficulty and challenges, don't look at them anymore as a way for you to suffer, but look them as a medication to strengthen you. When you're going through pain, say no, it's a medication. It's a booster to strengthen me. But let me prove you. Come with me. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. And James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. James 1, 2 to 4. Let's first go to Romans chapter 5. Because we're thinking that I'm making up myself. No. This is what the Bible says. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. We didn't read it already. But let's read it again. Not only so, but we are also glory. In our suffering. He said we are glory in our suffering. Why? Because we know that suffering produces. It's not me who's saying it. It's the Bible. And what the Bible says is true. Apostle Paul said, now I am looking at suffering differently. I'm no longer looking at suffering as something to put me down. But every time the devil is bringing suffering, I know that this suffering is will produce perseverance. I have another perception of suffering. It's like a medication which is bitter. It's like an injection they are giving me. It is painful when it's entering, but in a couple of weeks or a couple of days or a couple of minutes or hours, I will feel good. So when you're going through suffering, God is actually strengthening you. Your inner part is strengthened. Your perseverance is strengthened. Because those are the things that are going to reveal your perseverance. Those are the things that are going to reveal. Then you will see, oh, I don't have perseverance. Let me look for it. You see, if you do not go through sufferings, you are not going to know that you are a man of perseverance. You are not going to know that you are a man of character. When you go through it, you say, hey, 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 hey I did not have any character. Hallelujah. Beloved, somebody told me this very um, laughing story, and I want to share it with you for you to laugh a bit. I think I did share it here. Somewhere in a war zone, one day, military rebel entered a church. They just entered a church. They shoot up to everybody on the floor. They said to pastor, pastor, go decide. Everybody who is against, who is for the pastor must follow the pastor. They take one, they took him outside, then they hear, to, to. It looks like they've shot that one outside. Then they say, okay, everybody who's following Jesus must just go next to the pastor. 
Now the character started to show up. The perseverance started to show up. You know what happened? Few people, very few, to count by the finger of the hand, follow the pastor. The majority, no, 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 it's fine. I want my life. I want my life. They went on the side. And then those rebels brought back the person they, 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 they took outside. They told pastor, pastor, you need to preach again the gospel. Look at all these people. They are not faithful to Jesus. Just now we shoot. They, want, they say they want to see Jesus, but Lucy, they are not faithful to Jesus. You know, many circumstances when it comes to our life is shaking our faithfulness to God. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through pain. We don't want to go through difficulties. We give up easily. These people, they did not even kill anybody, but they thought that somebody was killed, and then they give up on Jesus. I don't know when you do that, how you're going to come back to Jesus. Jesus will never trust you like you. I don't trust you. You can abandon me anytime when things become sour. And we are like that. When things become sour, we abandon Jesus. We go to the tricky ways. Why? Because we are not persevering. And pain and suffering does what? Produce perseverance. Actually brought perseverance out. It's not actually producing perseverance per se, but it is revealing perseverance. <laughs> The third, I mean, let's go to uh, James chapter 1 verse 2. James chapter 1 verse 2. Do not give up on the Lord Jesus. No matter what. Persevere. Because there are riches waiting for you. James chapter 1 verse 2. <clears throat> let's go verse 2. Bible says, Consider it pure joy. What is pure joy? What is pure joy? My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trial of many kind, the Bible says consider it as pure joy. What is pure joy? Whenever you go through suffering of many kind. Because when you go through suffering of many kind, it will bring out your perseverance. It will show you that, oh, there's a problem with my perseverance. I need to change it. It is a problem with my character. I need to change it. Consider pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trial of many kinds. Verse 2, verse 3, verse 3. Because you know that the testing of your faith, the testing of your faith does what? Produce perseverance. There's no way else God will know that you are a man of perseverance if he doesn't put you, leave you into that. That, that fire is the only one that's going to bring the purity of what is in you. Because of time. The second thing that will help you to boost your perseverance or to keep your perseverance or to help your perseverance is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. Hebrews chapter 12. This is the Lord Jesus they're speaking about in Hebrews chapter 12. We did read it from the beginning. Now, listen. For you to persevere, you need to do something like Jesus did. Verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer of uh, and the perfecter of our faith, uh, for the joy set before him. He did what? He endured the cross, scorning it's shame and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Now, this is the issue. Jesus was going through the very big pain. He was about to give up. Remember what he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this, this cup go away from me. It was so painful. But you know why he persevered? Because he removed his eyes from the suffering, from the situation, from the problem, he put his eyes on the price. He put his eyes on the price. So putting your eyes from the price will help you to have the necessary energy to endure the process of the price. Are you getting me? We, we are giving up because our eyes are on pain. The Lord, and, and no, two years already. Lord, three years already. You know, you are making it difficult for yourself. 
Remove your eyes from whatever you're going through. Put it on the price. Look at the price. When you look at the price, you will be able to go through the process. You are unable to go through the process when you look at the process. Because if you look at the process, every step of the process will be difficult to bear, will be difficult to carry. Remove your pain on the process. Put your, your I mean, remove your eyes on the process. Put your eyes on the Lord. Then you will enjoy the process. Many of us are giving up because our eyes are on the process. We ask God, how many years? Oh God. It's so every day, every evening you go, God, it's too painful. No, enjoy what you're going through. Tell God, I'm enjoying eating only bread today. Because I know tomorrow, situation will change. Father, thank you for the bread. Thank you for the little one. That's what the Bible says. Do not neglect the small beginning. Do not be a complainer all the time. No, God, no, God. Tell God, I thank you for this process. Because I know at the end of the process, I'll get the result. I will go through the process with joy. No matter painful is the process, no matter difficult is the process, no matter long is the process, I know this process has an expiry date. There is a date where God will say, it is your time. Let me tell you, my sister. When God say it is your time, no matter what other people can say, no matter what the circumstances can say, when God say it is your time, it shall be your time. Nobody else can stand. When God will decide that it is your time, it will be your time. It will be difficult. People will say, people will go and say things about you. But when God says it is a time for you to be elevated, you shall be elevated. When God says it's a time for you to have that post, no matter what people say about you, God will give it to you. Because the Bible says that uh, lifting up, elevation does not come from the east, does not come from the east. Elevation comes from the Lord. When your time will arrive, nobody will stop you. Ask me, I'll tell you. When your time will arrive, people may say what they want. They may even bring things. They may even bring whatever. When God says it is your time, it is your time. Hallelujah. So enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. The Bible says, consider it as subject of pure joy. People ask you, why are you are smiling when you're in pain? They say you don't know. It is a process. The more it is painful, the more it's processing, the more the result, the outcome is becoming better. You see, when you, go, when you are cooking food, huh, if you don't, you don't put enough fire into that food, it's not going to get nice. You'll bring it to our table, we'll eat it, then we'll say, hey, this is raw food. Because you don't get enough fire. Your time will come. Hallelujah. Now, let me finish by this. In what should you persevere? In what should you persevere? Because now, people are persevering. But in what should you persevere? The Bible is telling us in what you should persevere. I'm going to give you a list of things in which you should persevere. The first bunch of things you should persevere is in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Don't persevere in lie. Don't persevere in sexual immorality. It is wrong. Don't persevere it in wrong. Don't persevere in things that you see that it is wronging others and wronging yourself. Persevere rather in things that will produce good results. The Bible says, watch your life and your doctrine closely. Are you getting me? Full stop. Persevere in them. Them means what? Watching your life and doctrine of Jesus Christ. Are we okay? Okay, it makes sense. The Bible says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Do what? Persevere in watching your life. So the first thing you should persevere in is watch your life. Where are you? You must check your life. Persevere in watching, in putting yourself into examination on a daily basis. Am I still a child of God? Am I still a man of God? Am I still? Check and persevere in there. Doctrine of Jesus Christ. Doctrine. You know, I don't have time to speak to you about the doctrine of Jesus Christ. But if you can go, you can see it in the book of Hebrews chapter 6. That is the, chapter 6 verse 1 to 2. The doctrine of Jesus Christ. 
You must remain in the door. Persevere in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Persevere in the doctrine. Don't persevere in the doctrine of demons. In the doctrine of evil, sir. In the doctrine of evil. Because of time, brothers, let the spirit of the Lord open it to you. Amen. Persevere in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. We'll speak about the doctrine of Jesus Christ another time. The second thing you should persevere into is in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. Verse if you persevere, then you will save both yourself and others. So if you are not perseverant in watching yourself, you'll kill people. If you don't persevere in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you'll kill other people. That's what the Bible says, persevere. Now the second thing you should persevere is in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. Act of apostle. Now, here are going to be a bunch of things that you should persevere into. Persevere in watching yourself. You know, it is important for you to check your life. Check yourself if you are still in the Lord. Now, they devoted, in other version they say, they persevered themselves to what? To the apostles' teaching. The third thing you should persevere, persevere in the apostle teaching. Persevere in the teaching I'm giving you. Amen. I'm here, the angel of God for you. The teaching I'm giving to you, are you persevering into it? The Bible said, they persevered into the teaching of the apostle. Four, into the fellowship. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, the Bible says that do not give up on the assembly like some people are doing it. Do not give up. The Bible says you should persevere into fellowship. Are you hearing me somebody? Amen. It's not me. When I say come to church, it's ah, this pastor also, he just wants us to go to church. You know when we go to church, we'll give offering. No, it's not me. It's not me who's saying you should come to church. The Bible says persevere. You must persevere on what? Coming to church in the fellowship. Amen. Fellowship. Even when you are tired. Even if your work was hard. Even if, I, come on. I don't sometimes understand how people can just sit nicely at home. But church is happening. How do you feel? Can you please explain to me? Please, after church, come explain to me. How do you feel? We are having church. You, you are sitting at your house. You are watching TV. How come? How do you feel? You are nice. You are okay. You are playing your game. You are, I mean, I, I, mean, I don't understand. I don't understand. I can't. You know, even if I was tired, even if I was sick, I will come. Because I, the Bible says we should, pe you need to persevere. The Bible says we persevere with, despite difficulty, challenges, and opposition. You see, you give up easily because your body opposes you. You are tired. You say, oh. The Bible says you should persevere in the Fellowship. Persevere into the breaking of bread. Breaking of bread is holy communion. That's why we need to prepare. We must do another holy communion. We must persevere into that. And the last thing, persevere into? Persevere into? Prayer. How often do you pray? How many times do you pray? Are you persevering in prayer? Or you only pray when we are here. You only pray on Friday. You, you is none. You only pray three times a week. You, wait. You only pray three times a week. You pray on Wednesday. You pray on Friday. And you pray on Sunday. Actually, you only remember that there is something called prayer when it's a day of prayer. Hey, my brother, persevere in prayer. Because everything that God prepared for you, you can only get them through prayer. So you better pray. Because if you don't want to pray, you will end up in very difficult situation. Persevere in praying. Despite opposition, I will pray. Despite difficulty, I will pray. Despite, despite whatsoever, I will pray. Many of us, we only pray when if everything is okay. Or we only pray when we are in need. There are people when they start calling you pastor, I just see their number on my phone, I know they're in trouble. 
Do one prayer now. Few people call, Pastor, I was just calling to find out how are you doing. God bless you. Do you know that the pastor is also a human being? Just like you. He likes also to receive calls from you. The other day, there's somebody called me and said, Pastor, how are you? I just called you to tell you that I love you. I was like, wow. There's still people in Benning Bush Bible Church like that who just call me to tell you that they love me. The pastor just calling you to tell you that I love you so much. God bless you. I'm praying for you. There are people when they call, list of problems. Pastor, uh, they did this to me. They did that to me. Come now. You leave everything. Come. I will come, but you need prayer. <laughs> Persevere in Persevere in prayer. Whoever will persevere to the end will be saved. Let us the Lord to give us the grace to persevere despite difficulty, failure, and opposition. Let's rise up on our feet so that we can pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Remember the paracletos close to you to help you close to you to understand you close to you to be a support for you he is here his hand are ready to help you say Lord Jesus forgive me I've been coward so giving up on a little pain, on a little difficulty, I was giving up. On a little opposition, I was giving up. But this morning, I've been strengthened by your word, by your presence. Holy Spirit, my hand has stretched to you. Come and help me. Help me, Lord. Paracletos, be close to me. Lift me up so that I may persevere to the very end. No matter difficulty, no matter opposition, no matter pain, in Jesus' mighty name, I declare and I decree I will make it. I will make it in Jesus' mighty name.